Welcome to Hymn Stories, a podcast about how our songs of the faith came to be and how they have encouraged, comforted, and strengthened believers like you and me. Hymn Stories is a part of the Media Gratia podcast network. My name is Ryan Bush. In another episode of Hymn Stories, we looked at the story behind Abide With Me by Henry Francis Light. Let's return to Light. His conversion story is noteworthy, and I want to share with you the origin story of another one of his choice hymns, Jesus, I, My Cross, Have Taken. Up until the year 1818, Henry Light was preaching a gospel which experimentally he did not understand. He was a religious man, but a lost man nonetheless. This he he did not suspect at all until on a certain occasion he was sent for by a brother clergyman who was very sick and in danger of dying. This man asked for Henry's counsel because he had come to the realization that his soul was in peril. He knew not the way of salvation. Now, when Light arrived and heard his brother's anxieties, he was ashamed and saddened that he had no idea what to say to the anguished man. They were both frightened and sobered. This led Henry to look into the grounds of his own hope, and he was convinced that his heart had never been savingly renewed. He was lost, and so was his friend. Soon after, they began an eager and anxious study of the scriptures together. Mercifully, in turn, each was soon changed by the spirit of divine grace, and from that moment, Light began a career of thorough devotion. One of the first hymns that he wrote after his conversion was entitled, Jesus, I, My Cross Have Taken. It is evident that this hymn was inspired by the great text of the New Testament, Luke 9, 23. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. It's likely that two events inspired Light's composition of this hymn. The first was his own conversion. The second was an account that had been conveyed to him concerning the plight of a young woman in England. This young woman was born in splendor, but disinherited by her father because of a great offense he took against her. The offense? Her conversion to a faith which he despised, and her quiet but resolute commitment to her Savior. Her parents were Christian in name, but name only. They had just enough faith to shield their consciences, just enough religion that they escaped being thought infidels. Their faith soothed their anxieties and fears, but it did nothing more. The notion of a cleansed conscience, an ardent love for Christ, or an entire consecration never entered their minds. The world, the world, the beautiful world with its ambitions and its pleasures was their all. Their daughter, their only child, was young beautiful, opening up in all the graces of early womanhood. She had studied in the best schools. She was elegant and true, and many a suitor looked on in her direction. With such charm, she would marry well and may even occupy some grand place in this world, if it were not for some noisy, ranting preacher. One evening, as she was returning from a ball, She happened upon a Methodist service being conducted. She went in and by the blessing of God was converted to Christ. When she returned home, she made known her faith and purpose to her father. It was infuriating to her parents to see their daughter brought under the power of preaching and to give her life to Christ. They were frustrated to see the child that was the joy of their hearts and the pride of their lives carried away with religious fervor. Their hopes and dreams for their daughter were crushed. 
The father raged, the mother grieved, and they would not have it so. How did their daughter act during the storm? With simple modesty, she was patient but firm. She bore the storm that was without by the blessed peace that was within. She was still loving and more obedient than ever, except on this one point. She would not forsake Christ. Having tasted the better portion, she would not give it up. This young woman went after Christ, denied herself, and took up her cross to follow him. Then came the trouble. So great was the rage of her father that he actually drove the child from his door and stripped her of everything. She was cast away by her father, but Christ did not cast her out. She had no home, but she hoped for a better one. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also, and you know the way to where I'm going. A little girl was once looking at a picture which represents a rock in the midst of a stormy sea, and on top of the rock was a cross to which a sea-battered woman clung, faint and exhausted. The wreckage from a ship can be seen disappearing into the Black Sea. What does this mean? asked the child. It's called the Rock of Ages. That means Jesus, to whom we cling for salvation. You know the hymn says, Other refuge have I none was the reply. Oh, yes, said the child. Then, after a moment's hesitation, she said, But that rock isn't my Jesus, for when I cling to him, he reaches down and clings to me too. And so he does, brothers and sisters. I love what Thomas Manton wrote must look upon Jesus as a father carrying all his children on his back or lapped up in his garment through a deep river through which they must pass and saying to them, fear not, I will set you safely on land. Look upon Christ wading with all his children through the floods of death and hell and saying, fear not, worm Jacob, fear not, poor souls, I will get you safely across. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Hymn Stories. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you sing and make melody in your heart to Him. Jesus, I my cross have taken all to leave and follow Thee. This be our prayer. Jesus, I my cross have taken all to leave.